he basically started talking about how like you know goon, goons goons it's not really like the dpci has a problem with goons specifically it's just that they're as all said they're the most content rich and they're also very flagrant in how they use all of their uh ships uh so how they use supers and how they use titans and how they use rockles they, they they're very uh obnoxious in, in how they use them right there because they, they they know they have they have such a large umbrella that they can protect them literally easily um but we we were watching um how they um do do their locust fleets right where it's where, where they have these huge huge rockle fleets of you know 200 rockles in a fleet and they go go to a specific region they strip out the entire region of moons or not the entire region but maybe like 20 something moons or whatever uh and then basically they have they move their super cap fleet with them to cover their entire uh entire mining operation and we looked at this and we thought this is a really juicy target you know uh you know maybe there's a way that we can uh figure out a way to trap their rockles and 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 hit them you know and, and get them un- unexpectedly and actually just about just about around this time i was uh invited on to a talk with uh, ron Mm-hmm. talking uh, in stations well, yeah and yeah exactly and then we were talking about whaling and stuff and then afterwards basically ron invites me to a channel with um with pittsburgh who had recently gotten kicked from um goon swarm because of the failed um dread bomb in uh in Tenerifus, the one that Vili was just uh meant and um yeah so we get talking and then pittsburgh is like well i have inside information about how this works and that was really perfect for us because um we were like looking at things like oh we need to get a rockle tune into the into goon swarm we need to be able to understand how they run the locust fleets you know see where we can what are their weak points uh where we can attack them you know what traps we can set up you know that sort of thing and so Pitt's basically giving us all of this information and then helping us out basically develop a plan for this shaved off the time uh, that it would have taken for us to, uh, to to set this whole thing up from like a three month plan to literally like a week and a half. Wow. So, um, yeah, he, so, yeah, so, yeah he, he really accelerated everything because we could like, you know, I could say, you know, Pitts, how do, you know, how do FCs that run these things, how do they use their Sinos? How do they move their Rockles? Like what's their timing on when do they bring their super caps in on Titans in? You know, how many FCs are in uh, chat? What's a normal, what's a normal kind of amount of, uh, uh faxes and supers and titans for them for them to have, to have in fleet so we can see if they understand if, if they know they're about to get dripped on you know we can probe all of this on the fly you know so he was very useful for um, providing um information that we could really uh kind of cater the plan to and obviously he was very he was very useful for uh you know for helping out on grid as well um at some point i disconnected from the fight and he started taking over broadcasting um but yeah so this this plan basically yeah it it, it, it took um we had about a week or something of setting up the plan, like finding out what's the best place to hit them, like developing the strategy of what's the minimal kind of set of things that we need to have covered. And then we, the minimal number of people we need to have there such that we can actually pull this off. Well, how, and, did, you, how uh, did you keep it secret from, because you have to have a certain amount of people to do this. Yeah, but you sure. also can't let the secret out. Yeah, so um, I run uh, a group now um, that's basically designed to do these kind of bombs. And this is exactly the same group, actually. So the, the group that you see on the screen now that's doing all these kills for the world, we're the exact same. Uh, let me just uh, tell yeah. people who aren't uh, able to see this, we're watching footage of the uh, Rorkles that were destroyed in TEG TAC SD, uh, and that's in Fountain. And that's the video that we're watching. I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, I think here we had something like 70 dreads, maybe 65, 70 dreads, maybe more. Uh, I don't remember exactly. Um, but basically, you, yeah, I'm not going to really tell you how too much detail, I guess. But, um, essentially, we, ma- I manage a group that basically is highly opsec. It's it's very hard to get in. Um, I don't like. I don't just invite anybody. I invite people that I know, that I know are trust, that I can trust, and I know that like that they'll be selective in who they then bring to the, to the group. And then we, I make it very clear from the very beginning, like all this stuff is you know highly opsec. You cannot share it. And actually, for this particular drop, it's quite interesting because uh, even <laughs> even the people. So we moved a bunch of dreads um, uh, to Fountain such that we could actually have range on the on the on the Rockle fleet. Um, so we 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 set up to obviously hit them in Fountain. We could have hit them in in other regions as well, but we picked Fountain because that was just the next one that they were doing at the time. 
Um, but it's interesting actually because as people were moving the dreads and they were joining my fleet to, to move all the stuff across uh, and the actual drop itself, people in the, in my fleet didn't even know what they were dropping into. They were doing essentially, yeah, they were doing essentially a trust fall. They just, they they were saying, okay, like it sounds like it's going to be fun, but let's just see how, let's see, let's see what we load, load grid, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, somebody here but in that, somebody here in chat says I was the Sino and I didn't know what it was and until two minutes before the drop uh, began. That's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty so, tight yeah. security. That's just good opsec though. Like that's the way it has to be. Yeah, frankly, the, the I gave it like. 40% chance for the OPSEC to be remain tight. And so I was very surprised that, uh, you know, we pulled it off. Yeah, it's really hard to maintain OPSEC in these things because the problem is it isn't just, like OPSEC in this case, isn't just someone like leaking a simple op simple, simple kind of OPSEC breach, like someone just linking a screenshot of a ping or something. Even even a mention of, you know, someone is moving dreads into your region, in, into NPC region of, you know, close close by. Even that mention of that happening is bad. That means that they know about the dread bomb and they know they have that, that there's capacity there for this to happen. So, like the opsec, it, it it has to be ultra tight, you know, because the moment someone gets an even inkling of a, of a, or this stuff might happen, that can kill completely. Um, like, cause for example, like, it could have been the case that this locust fleet swap happened that they um, didn't do the, just the strategy that basically we exploited to get this get this drop to happen. Um, so like, yeah, so many things can go wrong here. Um, so it's, you know, it's incredibly important yeah. that it's like a herd of, um, I'll just say water Buffalo get a smell of, uh, a pride of tie of, of lions nearby. That's enough to say, yeah, we're not going to do what we were thinking we were going to do. Yeah, exactly. So they had no uh, clue. As far as I know, bushes. Goons uh, knew something was going to happen, but they didn't know the exact way things are going to turn out, and it was very it was kind of surprising for them to face what's exactly happening. Yeah, so uh, I think someone someone in Fountain NPC Fountain managed to scout a couple of our dreads jumping in at some points. They knew that the, there were dreads in the region, but they didn't know how or obviously what the plan was, which is important. So, okay, I won't tell you to go into your tactics because you're probably using those tactics again and again. So. Um, <laughs> but but that is that is interesting that they were like, hey, something's a little bit off here, but they weren't alerted enough to say we got to call this whole thing off. Yeah, exactly. And what's nice actually because they also didn't sorry. think that anybody could do this to them. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of one of the things that kind of encourages to do it even more because it was this kind of flagrant, uh, like a. Uh, admission that they're untouchable right and that was the really juicy part about this is that essentially showing that there is a weakness here and that you can't exploit wasn't there um, wasn't there a joke where one of the people in this fleet and this is a locust fleet of about 150 rorkels very expensive mining ships and somebody in the fleet said uh not one rorkel has ever died in one of these yeah. fleets there was one of the FCs that said that actually just before I think as the supers and titans were setting up on the keep star in oh what's the what's the region the the, the regional between um Delve and Fountain I've forgotten the name of the, the system like as they were all Why jumping in sorry as they were all landing on on the keep star they were like the one that one of the green FCs was like no Rockle has ever died in the in the locust and then literally five minutes later this happens <laughs> which is just which is just perfect timing you know <laughs> what FC was that. Oh, I don't remember the name. Oh. I can't. I can't remember. It doesn't matter, but it was hard to imagine. In other words, that a loc anyone would try to take on a locust fleet because it was certain death for them. Yeah, uh, and it was quite you have to be yeah, exactly. pretty careful making those kind of hubris statements. Otherwise, you pay for them later. Yeah, exactly. Well, he it's actually quite interesting minutes. because uh, in in this drop, um, the goons were really confused actually by the drop because we actually had two two separate drops in one. It wasn't just this, actually. We actually also put some dreads on another system. And In 8, 7, we, XQ? Yeah, okay. exactly, yeah. And uh, basically, this confused them hugely, um, the fact that there was a big dread bomb and a small dread bomb. Because obviously, as when this happens, people start panicking, obviously, and that's kind of one of the things that you're capitalizing on. Because you know the, the Super and Titan response to this dread fleet is horrifically powerful, right? This dread fleet can get wiped very quickly with... The entire, you know, goon um, super fleet that was available to them, um, but the fact that we had this additional mini dread bomb on an Athnol going off somewhere else was uh, was hugely important for keeping them like confused exactly what you know what was happening on grid. So was that and part of the that, plan? 
that was actually a happy incident, like a happy oh. coincidence. Um, so basically what happened was as, as I was uh, calling for Dread to jump in, an, another guy basically managed to get some of the raw calls that are in another system to aggress uh, on the sign node that was, that was basically just randomly, randomly warping around the system. And uh, we basically, as we jumped into this particular system, we also jumped some extra dreads to that system that was where the sign was being aggressive. And then that double drop was basically basically one of the reasons why I think goons took longer than they possibly probably should to get all their supers and titans on grid. Yeah, now we're looking at footage. Yeah, so th yeah th this is a drop that basically, uh, there's only a few dreads, as you can see, but these mm -hmm. guys were then screaming intel into the comms. The guys in uh, TEG were screaming intel into the comms, and this kind of concophony of screams was uh, <laughs> <laughs> confusing everything, you know. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they weren't screaming. You know, I'm just exaggerating for a dramatic effect. But... Oh, I don't know. They probably were. People get excited <laughs> when their ships come under fire from dreads. Well, okay. So at the end of the conflict, you guys all did get wiped out in your dreads. That's the point of suicide dreads. Um, but you ended up killing how much? Uh, I think it was about. Let me get the got the bat report here. One second. Four, it was 440 bill worth of stuff. Uh, you killed one third of the entire Locust fleet. I think it was like a 43 yeah, I think, or something. Yeah, I think it was about 65 Rorquals, actually, because a bunch of those Rorquals weren't on Z-Kill. Um, we found oh, out yeah. later that uh, a bunch of those actually didn't load on Z-Kill for some reason. So I think it was 65 Rorquals that we killed. And then we lost about half of the Dreads, actually. We, we, we managed to evac um, about half of them. I think we lost oh, uh, wow. 57 or 58. But that, that's just by the, the, the nature of how these things happen, right? It's not... Uh, we had, I, think, I don't think we had anyone bombing us. We just had some of the Dreads we fit, um, smart bombs, as we, uh, as we tried to ex extract and then uh, managed to get a few of them out. But... Now, why did you try to extract in the first place? Uh, because essentially we... Um, we were losing dreads heavily and we weren't killing. Uh, actually, no, I think we killed all the rockles that we could, if I remember correctly. Yeah, because I think only one third jumped through to begin with. Yeah, I think actually we killed, all, we killed most of the rockles that we could. We didn't really try to extract, but we just had an outsider up that was, that was available to people that were able to jump out if they could, because at that point we were just losing critical mass to be able to kill these rockles fastly, quick, quicker than we were losing dreads, basically. So. I see. So at a certain point, you're, it's not worth the dread loss, so then you can get those out if you can. Yeah, yeah. Wow, so 480 billion. Okay, just so people understand the scale of this, is a few different things to look at. One is the sheer... Oh, no, yeah, so I got, I got the wrong BR. So, yeah, I think I'm wrong here. I okay. think we did lose a bunch. Of, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of the second fleet that I did recently. Yeah, we did lose a bunch of the dreads. We didn't extract that many. Okay, so you, that's okay. They're suicide dreads. You're supposed to do that. They insure really well. You get your money back. Yeah, yeah this is actually, I think this is before the insurance change as well. If I'm it was, correctly, yeah. I think, yeah. So the point is that you, this works on a few different levels. One is you take a huge bite out of anybody, although the Imperium has a lot of money, but 400, you know, half a trillion is a lot of ISK. But the, the bigger price is the psychology of it. Yeah, it's also interesting, actually, because on the SRP front, um, I remember seeing a ping from, Goon, from leadership in Goon saying that they were going to SRP all the rules. But I also heard reports that actually the rules that were SRP'd only actually received something like two and a half bill per per raw call loss, and then um, a lot a lot of the raw calls weren't actually SRP'd at all for various reasons, like they weren't fit properly and all this stuff. So even though they said they SRP'd them, I mean, correct, I'm not I'm not sure if this is entirely true because I I, need, I I would need to check this, but that's just this is just what I heard that they they weren't really SRP'd well at all. So I'm not sure but, why. I mean, well, it's a huge bite. I mean, a lot of the wealth in the Imperium is individual based, right? Because they allow their members to make money and they make a little bit of the money that the players make. They tax their players, in other yeah. words. So it's not like it all goes into one coffer and that coffer is a giant war chest. Yeah, it's probably just, yeah. The wallet just wasn't big enough to cover the loss, yeah. Right. As a comparison, um, DPCI killed about 3 trillion. I just checked the stat yesterday since December. So in four months, about four months, we killed 3 tri trillion. So it, yeah, this nice. uh, roll call hit is a very good chunk of, uh, you know, a, you can kill in one day. And um, maybe with all the MR stats, it's not that relevant. But I think uh, with recent reductions in farm and stuff, it makes a greater amount of... Uh, it, 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 it's relatively closer to 
how much is being uh, generated in wealth in Dell. So it's a bit more relevant. But of, as always, it's the psychology of it is the biggest thing because the message of no one uh, being safe in this region, you know, we can kill a super when we, if we wanted to, or we can kill touch or work wells if we wanted to. That message is more precious than the uh, value killed. Yeah, I think like yeah, the psychotics of this is just huge because they they were saying for so long that their locust fleet weren't weren't touchable, right? That they they're impossible to to hit, you know, and. Uh, to be able to, to be able to pull, up, to pull off a hit like this against them was was huge for us because you know it kind of validates you know the way the way that we do things. 